Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. I'd like to start by apologising for the absolute mess behind me. There is a reason that my studio really is messy, and I'll tell you what that is right at the end of the video. But it gives me a great opportunity to tell you three ways to hide a messy background when you're shooting portraits. So we've got lots to get through, so let's get a light set, let's get a model in, don't forget to click on the bell icon and the subscribe button. Let's get shooting. So for the first setup, I'm going to hide this rather messy background in perhaps the most simple way, and that is just to cover it up. So what I've got is this piece of foam core. I had a rummage around in the studio. I found this. It is roughly three feet by two feet. It's not the biggest background in the world, but it will work as a background. And to make it really work well, I need an awesome model. And luckily I have the incredible Fern as my model. Come on in, Fern. So Fern's gonna stand in front of the background. I'm gonna light Fern using a Evolve 200 from Flashpoint, something like that. You'll notice the angle of the light. So the idea is that any shadows will disappear away from the background. And that's why Fern is stepped away from the background. So there are no shadows on it. So let's take a picture like this, see what we get. Okay, Fern, I'm gonna come and stand here and take a picture, perfect. So when I do that, we can see I get a nice gray background. That looks nice, but Fern doesn't really fit in the background. In fact, it's really not a good fit at all. So I've got a couple of choices. I could get a bigger background, but that's the biggest one I've got. I could get a smaller Fern. That's not going to work. So the solution is actually to compress the background and Fern together. So how do I do that? Well, I walk this way. I'm gonna walk away from Fern. Further away I get, the more compression I get. So when I take this picture, Fern now fits inside of the background. However, to make that work, I have to crop really heavily into this picture. That really isn't a great idea. So what I'm actually gonna do is crop in camera by using a longer lens. Zoom lenses effectively just crop. That's what they do. The compression part of things is distance. So I'm gonna step back over here, take the same shot again. Here we go, Fern. Brilliant. So now Fern is contained within my background and you would have no idea that that is just a piece of two by three foam core. So that works really well. So I'm gonna take a few photos like this. Fern, are you ready? Okay, let's go. This setup is going to make use of something called the inverse square law or light fall off, which is a subject I've done in previous Adorama TV videos. So if you want a deep dive, go check those out. But I'm going to change one thing, which is the light stand. Anything shiny is going to cause you problems with this. So if you can get it out of your shot, now's the time to do it. So the idea with this is I'm going to make this background disappear by making it go black. That's the plan. Obviously to make this work, I need Fern. So Fern, if you'd like to come and step into the scene. The first thing I'm gonna do is to make sure that this light is close to Fern. I mean, really pretty much as close as I can reasonably get it without actually hitting Fern. That's probably about right. And if I do that and I meter for this scene, I should get quite a dark background. Let's just do a, a test shot and see what we're getting. Okay, Fern, here we go. So, little test shot. Okay, it's reasonably dark, but it's not completely black. Now, the question we need to answer is, is that background being lit by the flash or is it just being lit by the room light in the scene? So the solution is really easy. I'm just gonna turn my flash transmitter off and take the same shot at the same settings. Here we go, Fern. 
No flash gives me no picture. So I know that this scene is being lit by that flash, which means we need to do something a little bit better than this. So part of my solution is going to be this, which is an egg crate grid, which is really a must have whenever you're getting a softbox because it allows me to direct the light where I want it to go. So at the moment, from your position, you can see the surface of the softbox more or less. But as I angle it away, so you see less and less of it. And if you don't see any white of the surface of the softbox, you won't get any light reaching you. So we're going to angle it towards Fern. Um, Fern, if I just tilt it slightly away from you, can you see any of the softbox, yes. the white? Okay, cool. So Fern can see a little bit, which means a little bit of light will reach her. How much? Well, let's take a test shot and see. I know I'm going to need to increase my flash power, so let's take that up and see what we get. Here we go, Fern. And that looks pretty good. So Fern is correctly lit. The background is well, basically black because it's massively underexposed. Now I know what you're thinking. What about the large softbox with a grid on the side of the picture? Well, that's something we'll deal with in post-processing. But for now, well, this is working really well. Okay, Fern, let's try taking a few photos like this. So for the last setup, I'm going to do what you might have thought I would have done at the beginning, and that's try and blur this background out slightly. But it's not that easy in a small home studio because I don't have a lot of distance between the background and fern, which means I'm never really going to get a blurry background. So I'm going to use one of my little favorite tricks to add to the scene. First things first, let's see what it looks like with a different aperture. So fern, if you'd like to come back in. So my camera, I'm going to change from f8 to f2.8. And the first picture I'm actually going to take is a picture without any flash firing, because if I open up the aperture, the room lights are going to affect the picture more than they did before. So no flash, f2.8, same settings. Here we go, Fern. And when I take that picture, yes, it's dark, but it's not so dark that Fern's disappeared. So we need to do something. And the solution is to change my shutter speed. So I'm going to change my shutter speed to maybe two thousandth of a second. Let's try that. Still no flash. Still looking for that nice black, no flash, no picture. And this time we've got it. OK, so I know I need to be at two thousandth of a second. So to make that happen with my flash, I need to put it into high speed sync mode, which it is. I could just turn the room lights out. That would probably do the same job, but then you wouldn't see the video. So let's just take a shot like this. Two thousandth of a second, f2.8. And that looks pretty good. The light is lighting Fern, but it's also lighting the background. Although it's not as bright as Fern, it's also not that blurry. So just using an aperture to hide the background in this case won't work. So what I'm going to do is add in some smoke into the scene because, well, I love a bit of smoke. Why not? So I'm going to make this background fill with smoke, which should help to hide it and to really emphasize it. I'm also going to backlight the smoke that will make it glow, making the background here a lot harder to see. So this is going to go in at the background. I've got a blue gel on it as well, just to add a splash of color. I may change the gel as we go through. Um, I'm also going to need an assistant for this. So Sam, if you want to come in, uh, you're going to be on smoke duty. Fantastic. Uh, Fern, if you'd like to uh, step in. OK, let's, uh, let's put some smoke in the room. Everybody ready? Oh, we're off. Doesn't matter. We're off. Let's, <laughs> let's go for it. OK, I need lots of smoke. There's no rush for this because I need this smoke to build up. There we go. And as the smoke builds up, so you can see that the effect starts to really build as well. Now, there's a little trick we can do with our smoke machine, which is to have it on a continuous flow of smoke. So that's how I'm going to set this up. OK, let's just change the colour.
Okay, I'm gonna throw another background light in there. So there you go, three very different ways to hide a really messy background, and I don't think you need much hints to work out which was my favourite. Now if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And I did say I'd tell you why this place is in such a mess, and it's because we're moving house, so I have to move my studio and this place isn't coming with us. So this is the last video in my small home studio, but don't worry, there is a new small home studio coming very soon. Okay, well, there we are. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching. Click on the subscribe button. I'm gonna miss this place though.